Oh, <laughs> what up, y'all? And welcome back to another one. Oh, those electric windows, I'm telling you. Yep, pretty bougie for a side by side, ain't she? Oh, 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 come on, friend. Ah, I've been warning y'all. We have a pigeon hunt coming. Finally, it's today. And thank goodness we are not getting poured on. Uh, it was supposed to rain all morning long up until like 10 o'clock in the morning. Right now it's sitting at about 6.50. We'll give it a good 6.50 in the morning. Sunrise is right at 6.30. Have not seen a pigeon yet, which that's good news. I'm so thankful it didn't rain all night. The ground is extra dry. Fred's going to get the hunt, aren't you, bud? He is ripping and roaring today. Just a little two-man hunt. Me and G-Wagon. Old Gerald. You guys love him. You all know him. Yep, just us two. We got the spreads set already. We got the A-frame set up already. You guys are going to like this little setup. But before we get into today's hunt, I want to remind you all that uh, over at my podcast, which, guys, the podcast in itself super entertaining we talk about sticky subjects that i can't necessarily talk about here on the channel whether it's gun related politics what else uh, other youtubers that i can't hunt with and why uh industry drama just about anything over there to be honest with you and i'm giving away a hunt of a lifetime uh, i just purchased the uh, flights for the lucky two winners Yep, two of y'all will be winning this bad boy. The flights cost, I believe, $5,600 by themselves. So whoever wins this thing, you're lucky. But you got to join the podcast to get entered uh, for a chance to win this hunt. Not only are we giving away the Alaska hunt, uh, that'll be September 18th to the 21st. But the giveaway is actually in June. But we're giving away a Sand Hill Flyways hunt here in my hometown here in the lodge my spill is over here's the spread and the podcast it's always linked at the top of the description down below here is the situation two mojos a bunch of full body pigeon decoys that are turned over set these bad boys upright these weeds in here super super tall Gerald made a good statement. He was like, good thing we're hunting it right about now. He was like, because these weeds, they're not going to be using this field for too much longer. But we got the A-frame set back in some green weeds. Yep, blinded her up pretty good. What are you doing, man? Looking for shells. Looking for shells. That is no lie. Pigeon hunting. Come on, Fred. Heel. Pigeon hunting takes a lot of shells. And if y'all are in the same boat, which I'm sure you are, everywhere is out. Literally everywhere. You finding anything on there? Yeah, I just ordered us a thousand. Oh, nice. That's about There's the only one kind, and it's a lessened recoil kind for handicap, but I'll take it. At this point, we'll take whatever we can get our hands on. <laughs> Sit, bad dog. Stay. Fred broke after the coyote. Sit. A coyote came up behind us. Sit! That Fred. Coyote came up behind us and girl was like, hurry, hurry, get your camera. Came up behind us and girl was like, hurry, hurry, get ready. I was like, no, just go. I hope I got that on the shot cam. I guarantee you I did. Where's he at? Yeah. Go ahead. Give him a one. Two. Oh, he's dead now. That boy's all dead now. That's crazy. Dude. Skunks out of the boat. Dude, just run right behind us. What the heck? We just started laying into him. 
Look at that. No way. Out of nowhere. Fred, that's a bad dog. Not a good dog. Place! <laughs> oh, the pigeons. Oh, no, those are they pigeons? I think so. Is it? Maybe not. Maybe I can't tell. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> Y'all gotta smash a thumbs up for that. Come on now. Fred, dude, you're not gonna have a good morning if you uh, think you're gonna do that all day. There's no way. Set. Bro broke after the coyote. Wow. What in the world? Dude, that was cool. That was real cool. It's like that time that one walked right up on you when we were trying. Yeah. I thought you were joking. No. I was like, no. What in the world? That was sweet, dude. Dude, every time we hit him, he just, ugh, ugh. Well, I mean, we're shooting. We're shooting Target these. loads. Yeah. Um, well, these are all, we're shooting high bird, high bird. which high bird, high bird is really, really good stuff, uh, but it's meant for doves and pigeons. Ounce and an eighth high brass, eight shot. Every time we shot, boy, he felt it. I mean, it was, uh, uh, oh, those are uh. pigeons. Oh, first flock. That's a good group. Turns. Yeah, they went right over us. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? A, it's just windier. It's making a wide swing today. Yeah, a wide swing today. And if they just all come in all nicely, it'd be pretty nice. But it's 735, 740-ish. And first birds. Yesterday I scouted the field and 8.30 they were all here. So looks like they're right on time. Hopefully they play nice. Come on. Get in here, birds. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Give us a good turn. Come on. Another group behind us coming over the top. Well, they're all doing the same exact thing. Come on. Please. Please, please, please do it for us. Well, Frederick, Fred, where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? Hey, Frederick, how are you today? He's just happy to be out here, I guarantee it. As for girl tonight, <laughs> a little depressed. It's been raining on us ever since we shot the coyote. Uh, the pigeons that have came out, which isn't many, uh, they're not loving our spread where we are in that grass situation that I was talking about Pretty sure that is the issue uh, They're all going directly to the corner of the field up against the road and uh, Not even given our decoy spread mojos nothing a look at all as for the coyote, that was unexpected. <laughs> Come on, Frederick. Time to get some exercise in, boy. That's one happy dog right there. The good thing about Fred, it don't take a pigeon. It don't take any shooting, nothing. He's just glad to be out here with his dad. Frederick! Frederick! Hi there, big dog. Come on. Come on. Well, we're all picked up. Time to check out the dog. Not the biggest dog in the world. No. No. Huh. That was wild. <laughs> Second time that's ever happened to me and you together. Yeah. First, first one was a lot closer. Yeah, the first time was a lot closer and it was a turkey hunt. If y'all haven't seen that, you gotta go watch that video. But, unreal. Well, we are back at the lodge. Not an ideal pigeon hunt. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, that's hunting, you know, that's hunting. Uh, right now it's sitting at, let's check, let's check the weather real fast because I'm curious. Yesterday I scouted that field. It was a very nice day. Very warm and sunny, no rain. And they loved it, they loved the field today. Right now, it says it feels like 43 out and it's spitting rain. And it is 
nine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I wish I would have chose a different day to try to pigeon hunt that field. What's good is that I didn't ruin it, and I guess I can try again, you know what I mean? Come on, Fred. Come on, dude. Let's go. Old Freddy, he hasn't been hunting much. We have not been hunting much, have we, Frederick? And it really showed today he broke on that darn coyote. I bet you during that time, Fred probably thought that it was a goose or something that we were you know ground pounding uh he probably had no idea that it was another dog to be quite honest with you did you dude you gotta sit sit he's just so excited usually on every hunt um i'll have to get on to him pretty good or pop him on the nose uh just to calm him down so just like that i guarantee he would have did better uh after the coyote incident because I did uh, pop him on the nose pretty good and it just takes his energy level from here to here and makes him focus and listen instead of being so high strung. I'm debating on Frederick uh, to get him in training some more this summer. I said I wasn't going to because of his hip dysplasia but um, I really I'm, I'm pretty positive that it was a different injury that had him limping last fall and that his hip dysplasia, even though he has it, it's not an issue right now. It really isn't. Uh, he doesn't limp at all. As you all seen him running through the field, he does great. Um, so I'm thinking about taking him back to Charlie, the dog trainer, and we could do some more dog training videos uh, for you guys. But for Fred, uh, he could get some good training because this season is going to be lit this season is going to be so much fun he's going to be busy going to be a very busy busy working dog and i need him for one not to break we had that under control until we've discovered hip dysplasia and he stopped hunting for a while there but now i'm like man i, I wish i just never would have skipped a beat it took him a little time to heal up i think he originally tore uh, a rear muscle, uh, something in his hip, something in his leg, because he jumped off the sherp. When I had the dive bomb sherp here, he jumped off the back, clipped his rear legs, and ever since then he was limping. But now, that's a quick update on Frederick. Yeah. I really wanna get him back in training. Drop a comment down below. Should I just get him back in some easy training? Should I just do most of the training myself? I kind of want to do it all myself in the backyard and on some ponds, but maybe we'll just go over and work with Charlie here and there. I miss Charlie's training. He's such a good dog trainer. I'm really missing the lodge being busy. Missing people being here. Uh, if y'all were here during the whole season, y'all know what I'm talking about all the different clients we had in and out. Um, like I mentioned earlier, guys, I wanna to touch on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it quite a bit here because it's a big deal. Uh, the podcast, not only is it awesome, but we are, like I said, giving away the Alaska hunt. The, it's a big deal for me. It's the biggest giveaway that I've ever done, and it's in partnership with Charlie Somerville up in uh, Cold Bay, Alaska at Cold Bay Adventures, and he also runs Illusion Island Outfitters and uh it'll be a hunt of a lifetime when i say hunt of a lifetime i want to kind of give a rundown to y'all uh so brant brant geese we're going to shoot them up there it's the perfect time when all of the brant come through uh mid to late september and the date set on the schedule and on the flight tickets that i just bought uh is september 18th through the 25th my birthday is the 21st. We'll be up there for my birthday, which will be awesome. Uh, gonna make some killer videos up there and uh, see everything that Charlie has going on up there. His his guide service up there is, uh, uh, it's really not comparable to anything in the States because everything they do up there is 10 times as hard, uh, 10 times uh, remote, uh, getting supplies up there 10 times as hard. So. Uh, we got it all planned out. The flight's are already bought for two of you that are going to win. One guy will win, and you can bring a buddy, your dad, your brother, best friend, sister, wife, doesn't matter, grandpa. Anything you want to do, 
uh, you can you can bring a buddy. So it's going to be for two people. The flights weren't cheap. They were much. They were well over five grand for the flights, uh, but it's worth it. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to have two of two of lucky y'all, two lucky people, to go with me. Preston's going. Me, Preston, and two of you. Four of us total. It will be awesome. Like I said, the podcast is always linked at the top of the description. Not only are we doing the Alaska giveaway, but a Sand Hill Flyway giveaway for two of y'all as well. That will be for January or February. Uh, but the giveaways, uh, the Alaska one is in June, y'all. In June, uh, middle of June is when we're doing the Alaska drawing. And then the drawing for the Sand Hill one here will be probably around September 1st, September 15th-ish. So, oh, Freddy, what time is it, buddy? Oh, uh-huh. You want some? You want some? Oh, oh, you want some, Freddy? Here you go. He's a hungry dog. He was a busy dog today. <laughs> Not really. Just, just kidding. He wasn't very busy. Well, it is a couple hours later, and I'm on the way in town to go check my pigeon traps. Boy, howdy, that's a lot of turkey. Six of them right there. Um, but I wanted to talk about the coyote shot real quick. One of the coolest clips on my shot cam that I've ever uh, recorded. Honestly, uh, really cool. Shooting that dog, it was a female, and wasn't the healthiest dog wasn't the mangiest dog by no means but she was nasty when I held her up that's for sure she stank bad all coyotes do but sorry what I'm getting at is we didn't plan on going coyote hunting today uh, if, if if I would have I would have taken something much different uh, other than an eight shot ounce and an eighth uh, two and three quarter uh, that was a light load. I am running a full choke as well as Gerald. Both of us are running uh, Carlson uh, fulls. And um, man, I'll play it back here. I'm trying to remember it in my head the best I can. I wish I would have had the GoPro going. Uh, it was such a cool little like series of action. Just boom, boom, boom. Both of us stand up and start uh, just gunning. And I had to tell Fred to stop. No, to, to stop. He was breaking bad twice. Uh, he was almost getting in the way and chasing after this dog. It got wild. And uh, I'll just cover that, man. It was. Wish I, I wish I would have had a much bigger load, uh, much bigger shell, like a uh, three-inch number two BB at least, maybe even a three and a half. You know. But what a cool clip, wanted to cover that. We're headed in town to go pigeon trapping. I'm getting off here, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, thank you all for being here. I hope you all are enjoying, I had to get my words straight, uh, these late, these recent videos. I've been having fun with it. Hope you all are too. We'll see you on the next one. I've been getting laid back, baby. You should know that I don't need your criticism.